Earlier in the course, we talked about the OSI model and networking and how layer three uses, we'll put up here layer three uses IP addresses. And when we get down to layer two, well, it used MAC addresses. And we need a way to identify a MAC address for a given IP. And we use the ARP protocol for that. That's the address resolution protocol. And so we could then identify what MAC address is associated with an IP address so that we could communicate with it at layer two. And we've talked about this, we went through it, but it's just a little reminder because now we're gonna jump in and take a look at ARP in action. So down here, I'm on a Windows system. I'm on actually my uh, test PC in the lab environment. I'm gonna use the command ARP-A and this is gonna show me the ARP table and ARP cache for the system. So here we see a bunch of IP addresses over here and the associated MAC addresses. And if I scroll down, we see some more down here. But the idea is this is the MAC table within a window system using the ARP-A command. And we can then see that. So we can see that ARP is working. We can find out what MAC addresses are, are associated with what IP addresses. So again, this is on a window system. Now let's jump over to our big IP. There we go. And here in the big IP, what we're gonna do is go over here to network. Then I'm gonna go down here to ARP and over to dynamic list. There we go, super. So here we see a static list and this is for statically assigned MAC to IP mappings. And you can do that, but we'd like to use ARP and that is dynamic of course. So here I see my three web servers and I see the Windows host here. This is my test box. And over here we can see the associated MAC addresses with them. We can see the VLAN internal for our web servers, external for our Windows test box, and then a timeout and a state. And these are pretty important here. Now what we're looking at, this is also known as ARP cache, as I had mentioned. You might call it an ARP table or ARP cache. But here, let's take a look at the timeout here. What this is. Uh, once an ARP entry is in the ARP cache or ARP table, it is there for a given amount of time. And this timeout, what it does is it counts down and once it reaches zero, if it doesn't receive any further traffic from that device, it doesn't need to communicate with it, then it doesn't need to keep it in the ARP table here because it's just using up a little bit of resources and why keep everything's ARP when you don't need everything? If you need it, you can just ARP for it. So we see this is set to six right now, and this is the countdown timer. So when I refresh this, I expect that this here, this entry down here for my Windows test box is going to disappear. So what I'm gonna do is go click on down here, class of service, then go back to ARP and go back to my dynamic list. And we see Windows is gone now. And that's because Windows hasn't needed to communicate it with it. My Windows test box it is. But if I go back to my Windows test box and I open up a browser, and I go ahead and I tell you what, before I go ahead and try to communicate with the big IP, because when I do, it's gonna show up here. Let's actually fire up Wireshark so we can see the ARP packet. So let me grab that back here, it's in the background. There it goes. Let me, uh, let's see, I wanna do this on my ethernet two adapter. That's the adapter on the test network. Go ahead and it is now running. So now if I go here, and I go ahead and let's do a incognito window so I don't get any cached information. There we go. And the page comes up. Excellent, excellent. We'll close that, close that. And I'm gonna go stop the capture. What's the two things you see at the very top of this capture? <laughs> That's right, the protocol is ARP. And if we look at this, let's look at this first one. Right here, this is the source's VMware. The destination is broadcast. And this is where my Windows test box is going out and says, who has 172.16.101.11? Go ahead and tell 172.16.101.5 who you are. And then we see a response. And this comes from the big IP. And it says, hey, 172.16.101.11 is at, and it provides the MAC address for the big IP. So here's my Windows box trying to communicate. But it knows it's on layer three at 172.16.101.11. That's where it's going, but it doesn't know the MAC address. So what does it do? It ARPs for it. 
And at this point, they start communicating with see our SYN, our SYN ACK and ACK, and my HTTP GET. Uh, down here, I have my 200 OK HTTP status. So we see ARP in action. We see this information going back and forth. Now, if I go back to my big IP, and I just click on something else. Let's say trunks and go back to ARP so I can refresh my ARP information. My Windows box is back in here. And the countdown timer is at 219 right now. So as a refresh, this is going to count down. And if these devices aren't talking with the big IP, it's going to drop them out of the ARP table when that timer uh, elapses. So there you go, ARP in action. That's pretty cool. So now let's talk about this end part here. This last column, state is resolved. Well, the thing is... There are three different states that exist uh, within ARP and ARP resolution. So I'm going to go back to my Windows box so I can use this right here. I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to put it in here, okay? So we've got three different states. One is resolved, which we see in the big IP, and that simply means that we have successfully resolved the MAC address. So it was a success. It worked. Then we also have incomplete. And this means the system has made one or more ARP requests, but has not received a response. So there you go. And then lastly is down. And this simply means no response <laughs> at all. And that's within the last 20 seconds. There you go. And that is the three states that you will see in an ARP cache or an ARP table uh, when dealing with ARP. So there you go. Those are the three states. And that's why when we went over here to the big IP, these are all resolved because they're working. And then if I go ahead and refresh this one more time, we see the timeout counter here for our Windows host is 219. So if I go here and then click back. And again, when I click off of it, I'm just doing that to refresh it. There we go. And now it's down to 101. So that's how we can see the ARP table and ARP cache here in the big IP, but we can do it via command line as well. All right, now we're going to SSH into the device, or big IP that is. So I'm going to bring that terminal in there. We're going to do SSH root at 192.168.121.11. There we go. Put in our password and excellent. So now here I have this pound sign in the config. I'm in the Linux shell. I'm not in the big IP's TMSH. So what we're going to do is run the command TMSH, which will then run this command in the TMSH, uh, which is our traffic management shell. And I'm going to do show sys mac dash address. Hit enter. And there we go. So this is showing all the MAC addresses associated with the system with the traffic management shell command. So here we can see that we've got some addresses over here and IP addresses over here. And some are IPv6, some are IPv4. We've got DNS resolution. We've got names of interfaces so that if you want to know what the MAC address of the 1.1 interface is, we can see that right over here. So this is how we can look at it from the command line. We can also run another command. So let's go ahead and make a little space. I think I should be able to clear that. There we go. Let's run this TMSH show net ARP all. So here is all the ARP information. So what do we have here? That's right. That is our internal servers, our three web servers. So the first command we ran here was show the system MAC addresses. That's showing our MAC address information for our system, all the interfaces and such. But then when we run the show net ARP all, we're seeing the actual ARP cache in here. And if we go back in here and we can do a quick refresh now, and we see that we have the same information uh, that we just saw within our terminal. So that is looking at the one-to-one -one mappings of MAC to IP addresses both in Windows and on your big IP via the web interface and via the terminal. In the next nugget, we're going to take a look at MAC masquerading. Thanks for watching and subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. And if you're interested in IT career or learning more about IT in general, hey, swing by cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.